Struggling to sleep? You're not alone. Around one in three adults report poor sleep quality and the health costs are massive, from anxiety and depression to heart disease. Now, the reasons for poor sleep are multifold, but one of the solutions could be as simple as bringing more nature into your life. In today's episode, we'll explore the fascinating science showing how biodiversity, the richness of life in our ecosystems, shapes our sleep. By the end, you'll walk away with three evidence-based actions that you can start today to help you get a better night's sleep. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Jake Robinson, and today we're exploring the science of getting better sleep. So, why is sleep so important? Sleep isn't only about how long you're in bed. Getting seven to nine hours is the ideal duration, but it's actually far more nuanced than that. We can think of sleep in terms of QQRT, so that's quantity, quality, regularity, and timing. Now, getting enough quantity of sleep allows your body to restore energy, repair tissues, and consolidate memory. But then there's quality of that sleep. This matters enormously. Deep, uninterrupted sleep is where much of the recovery takes place. Then there's regularity. Going to bed and waking up at consistent times is also really important. It helps your internal body clock stay aligned, making sleep more efficient. And finally, timing is absolutely crucial. So sleeping in sync with your natural circadian rhythm supports things like hormone balance, mood and alertness. Now we each have a slightly different internal clock, known as a chronotype, and some people naturally wake up early and feel more alert in the morning, while others function better in the evening. So you're either a morning lark or a night owl. If you're curious about your own sleep type, you can take the morningness eveningness questionnaire, or MEQ. So simply go to Google or another search engine and type in MEQ test. Now this is a simple test that helps you determine whether you're a morning or an evening person. And this is important because knowing your chronotype can help you align your sleep schedule with your biology, making rest more restorative. There's also a vital connection between sleep and your immune system. People who regularly sleep fewer than seven hours a night are almost three times more likely to catch the common cold or rhinovirus. And if you're only getting five hours or less, your risk of pneumonia an infection linked with conditions like COVID and others, jumps by around 70%. So sleep is absolutely vital for a healthy immune system. One study looked at what happened after just a single night of restricted sleep. Instead of total sleep deprivation, participants were limited to four hours. Researchers measured the activity of natural killer cells, the body's frontline defenders, a bit like the secret service of your immune system. And you can see my other video on phytoncides, which talks more about this. These cells are specialists at seeking out and destroying dangerous intruders. So what was the result of this study? Well, a staggering 70% drop in natural killer cell activity after just one short night's sleep. That's incredible. That's a major hit to the immune defenses. And these natural killer cells, they're also critical in protecting us against cancerous cells. So again, that indicates why sleep is so important to us. Now, sleep science has traditionally focused on circadian rhythms, hormones like melatonin, and bedroom environments. But in the past decade or so, researchers have begun linking sleep with exposure to nature. A systematic review looked at 13 studies, and 11 of them found that exposure to green space improves sleep quality or duration. That's a striking pattern. And this isn't just about walks in the forest. So even street trees and nearby green views were associated with fewer nights of insufficient sleep. An Australian study asked a simple but powerful question. Can trees help us sleep better? Researchers followed almost 39,000 adults in Sydney, Wollongong and Newcastle for several years. They looked at how much green space surrounded people's homes and compared it with their sleep. Importantly, the analysis adjusted for age, gender, income, education, work status and relationship status. The key finding? People living in areas with 30% or more tree canopy had about 22% lower odds of getting less than 6 hours sleep a night compared with those in areas with little to no canopy. And over time, they were also 13% less likely to develop short sleep. 
In contrast, open grassy areas and low vegetation showed no real benefits. The message is clear. Living near green spaces is potentially important for sleep, but not all green spaces equal. So trees seem to be the real sleep supporters, likely because they buffer noise and clean the air and cool urban heat and lower stress. Now growing and protecting urban tree canopy can be a powerful public health tool for better sleep. In another study, 36 healthy young adults spent three days in a low latitude evergreen forest and researchers measured their sleep before, during and after the trip. Insomnia symptoms dropped sharply during the retreat by about 43%. Now it's important to know that this was a, quite a small study, but the findings are promising. It suggests that even a short forest bathing break could deliver rapid sleep benefits. Another study suggests that indoor, low intensity gardening can improve sleep as well and choosing aromatic plants may amplify the positive effect. So why would biodiversity, you know, the nature around us, why would that affect our sleep? Well, there are a few mechanisms. One is stress reduction. So when we're stressed, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis, pumps out cortisol in our body. High evening cortisol is a big predictor of trouble falling asleep and frequent nighttime waking. Studies show that time in green or biodiverse environments can reduce cortisol levels. For example, a Japanese forest bathing study found that people who walk for just 15 minutes in a forest had 14% lower cortisol than those walking in urban settings. Two, circadian cues, things like light and sound and even general timing. So our circadian rhythm is synchronized by zeitgebers or time givers, like natural light, temperature and sound. So morning light exposure helps suppress melatonin at the right time and boosts serotonin, which later converts back to melatonin at night. This makes sleep onset smoother. The benefits of getting morning light surrounded by nature are probably enhanced. Personally, I find that birdsong also acts as a soft circadian cue, so the dawn chorus signals daybreak. 3. Thermal regulation. Deep sleep is more stable when the core body temperature drops by about 1 degree Celsius at night. Hot environments prevent this cooling, which can lead to shallow, fragmented sleep. Now, urban heat islands, so this is built up areas that trap heat, these likely make this worse. Research shows that hot summer nights can significantly reduce sleep, particularly the deep sleep, the slow wave sleep. Vegetation provides shade, increases evapotranspiration, and reduces surrounding air temperature. Now, satellite studies confirm that tree canopy can lower neighborhood nighttime temperature by several degrees effectively acting like natural air conditioning. Number four, biophilic engagement. So biophilia describes our innate affinity for living things. Engaging with biodiversity calms the nervous system. Forest volatiles, so what I mentioned earlier is phytoncide, so please see my other video on this. Trees such as pines release aromatic compounds that lower blood pressure, reduce sympathetic nervous system activity, so making us feel calm, and promote parasympathetic rest and digest states. So these changes persist into the evening and can support deeper rest. And there are animal studies that actually show phytoncide, so these forest chemicals that float around in the air, they may promote sleep by interacting with our GABA system, so our gamma aminobutyric acid system, which actually influences the brain's excitability. Sensory richness, so natural environments stimulate multiple senses at once, so smell, sound, touch, etc., which can induce a mindful and relaxed state. Now, this sensory engagement is linked with reduced rumination and better pre-sleep calm. So these are some of the reasons that having nature around us and in our lives can improve our sleep. So this is why some public health researchers now describe biodiversity as a kind of sleep infrastructure. The presence or absence of trees, soil, microbes, diverse wildlife is shaping something as personal as your rest at night. Think about it. Biodiversity regulates air quality, temperature, microbial exposures, stress physiology, and even our own perception of calm through soundscapes. It's like a multi-layered sleep aid woven into the environment itself. So when we restore nature and when we protect the biodiversity around us, we're not only helping ecosystems recover, we're also helping ourselves sleep better. So how can you bring this science into your own life starting tonight? Here are three simple evidence-based actions. Research shows that simply viewing greenery 
can lower stress. People who live around more trees and plants tend to sleep better. Even small doses like keeping houseplants by your bed or spending 15 minutes outside in the evening may help set the stage for a more restful night's sleep. The key is weaving it into your lifestyle for the long haul though. So think of it as less of a quick fix and more as building a lasting relationship with nature. Number two, tune in to natural soundscapes. So you can see my other video on how birdsong might help reduce anxiety for more information. If you can't get to a park or a forest, then you can play recordings of bird songs digitally. Flowing water or rustling leaves might also help. Research shows that these sounds can lower stress, calm your nervous system and promote relaxation. And in some cases, even helping people drift off to sleep more easily. Number three, get your hands in the soil. So gardening, even briefly, has been shown to reduce stress, lift mood, and help your body relax into a calmer state, all of which can support better sleep. While scientists are still exploring whether exposure to soil microbes, so things like bacteria, plays a role, the mental health benefits of gardening are already clear. So sleep is vital for our health and well-being, productivity, and also relationships. And the environments we live in and the biodiversity that surrounds us plays a role in the quality of our sleep. From soothing our stress to cooling down hot nights to recalibrating our body clocks, nature is an underrated sleep medicine. So the next time you struggle to drift off, remember, your path to better sleep may be through birds, trees and soil, not just blue light glasses and supplements. If you found this episode helpful, please do me a huge favour and like and subscribe to the channel for more science-based insights into how biodiversity shapes your health. And please sign up to my free newsletter over at www.jakemrobinson.com. Sweet dreams and see you next time. And remember, stay wild inside and out.